All right, clear one. AC 9115, Houston Tower, runway 15, right, line up and wait. 9115, line up and wait. AC uh, 9115, uh, RNAV taps, runway 15 right, clear for takeoff. RNAV to taps, uh, clear for takeoff, 9115. Set thrust. Thrust is set, 82.4. 80 knots. Checks. Now 1432, Houston Tower, runway 15 left, line up and wait, wind 106. V1, rotate. When you're training for your instrument rating, you usually spend most of your time learning how to land in an airport, shooting instrument approaches. You usually don't spend nearly as much time learning how to depart under IFR. But if you're flying out of a congested area or if you're climbing high, keeping arriving and departing traffic separated can be a little tricky. That's where departure procedures come in. They're like an instrument approach in reverse, keeping you separated from traffic as you climb out of the terminal area. If you're flying a jet or a turboprop, you'll fly them all the time. And today, we get to fly one in an ERJ with Express Jet. You typically find departure procedures in major terminal areas, like Denver or Houston. They're only flown by aircraft on an IFR flight plan, even if the weather is clear. And they're usually reserved for aircraft climbing into, or at least close to, the flight levels. But some airports use them for nearly all IFR aircraft. Take Salt Lake City. If you're departing in a single-engine piston and leaving under IFR, ATC will often assign the Salt Lake 3 departure. While every departure procedure keeps you clear of terrain, some DPs are published simply for terrain avoidance. Most are simply written instructions, but some are charted graphically. They're called Obstacle Departure Procedures, or ODPs. Take Walden, Jackson County, Colorado. The airport's in the middle of the mountains and doesn't have any services, but the Walru 1 Obstacle Departure Procedure helps you climb out without bumping into anything. But by far, most of the charted departure procedures are published to manage traffic. They're called standard instrument departures, but you'll usually hear them called SIDs. And you can group them into three types. In a radar vector procedure, ATC will give you vectors to your course. The procedure may give you an altitude to climb to, and it provides instructions to follow if you lose your radios. Standard pilot navigated procedures use ground-based nav aids, like VORs and localizers, to help you navigate a course out of the terminal area, though you can fly them with a GPS or an RNAV system if they're in your database. The Lens 8 out of Aspen is a great example of that. RNAV departure procedures do the same thing, except they can only be flown by GPS or an RNAV system, and they use waypoints instead of radials and nav aids. If ATC wants you to fly a departure procedure, they'll usually assign it to you in your initial departure clearance. Sometimes, they'll only want you to fly the lateral course and will assign you a specific altitude, like this flight we took from Denver Centennial to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Centennial clearance, Cirrus 333 three, three Alpha November, and is looking for IFR clearance to Santa Fe. Cirrus 333 three, three Alpha November, Centennial clearance, good morning. We're cleared to the Sierra Alpha Foxtrot Airport via the Pikes 7 departure. Alamosa transition, then it's filed. Climb via the SID accept, correction, climb and maintain 8,000. Denver departure frequency 132.75, squawk 2707. Okay, Cirrus 333 Alpha November is cleared to Sierra Alpha Foxtrot via the Pikes 7 departure, Alamosa transition, then is filed. Climb maintain 8,000. Departure 132.75, squawk 2707. Three, three off now, your reback's correct. Just let me know on ground when your run up complete. Eight of November is current. Well, I'll uh, talk to you when run up's done. Three off of November. In this case, ATC wanted us to climb immediately up to 8,000 without restrictions. That's why they said climb and maintain. Other times, they'll ask you to climb via the SID instead of climb and maintain. So then you'll meet every altitude restriction along the route until you reach the SID's top altitude. And that's where our Rita 5 departure comes in. To show the process, ExpressJet flew an ERJ from Houston George Bush Intercontinental to Corpus Christi and back so that we could film the procedures. In this case, we plan to fly the Rita 5 departure out of Houston using the Corpus Christi transition. Here's their departure briefing. Rita 5 departure with uh, 4,000 first stop and then probably the climb via after that with uh, multiple altitudes to watch out for. And then Corpus transition. Houston Intercontinental usually uses a digital clearance that prints out inside the aircraft, but this time we called for clearance on the radio so you can hear the route. Hey, good morning, Clarence. Uh, AC 9115 with Bravo looking for a clearance, negative PDC. AC 
ICC 9115 is cleared to Intercontinental Airport via Rita 5 departure, Corpus transition, and then as filed. Climb via SID except maintain 4000, squawk 4573. All right, 9115 is uh, on the Rita 5 Corpus transition. Climb via the SID except maintain 4000 and 4573 on the box, uh, 9115. AC 9115, read back correct to advise this frequency ready for taxi. Roger, thanks for your help. So the clearance is exactly as we planned, except ATC revised the top altitude for the procedure to 4,000 feet instead of 16,000. On takeoff, Tower tells us to join the transition via RNAV. AC uh, 9115, uh, RNAV taps from a 15 right, clear for takeoff. RNAV to taps, uh, clear for takeoff, 9115. Hard to have the taps. Give us the whole thing. All right. Lights are up. Forward takeoff checks. It's one five right. Complete. All right. Here we go. Good. Good to go. All right. Set thrust. And we're off and climbing. At 600 feet, per the chart, we go direct to taps. There's 600. There is there 600. FRA. All right. Flight level change. Flap zero. Set E climb. As we contact departure, they re clear us to climb via the Rita 5 departure, which means our revised top altitude of 4,000 feet has been canceled. AC 9115, contact departure. Departure 9115. Good morning, departure 9115 is with you out of uh, 2,700 for 4,000. AC 9115, use departure radar contact, climb via the Rita 5 departure. Okay, climb via 9115. All right, climb via, so taps out or below 4, and then bottle out or below 5. Okay. We need to climb via the SID to the published top altitude of 16,000, and cross taps at or below 4,000. That's why the 4,000 is shown under the line. After taps, we climb to cross bottle at or below 5,000. There's five for bottle. All right, five set. We're at taps, so up we go. As we cross bottle, things change. We need to cross Flyza at or above 7,000. The 7,000 is above the line. Okay, and this is our last at or below, then we can climb to 16. Just set 16. 16 is set. 16 is set. So we have to climb 2,000 feet in five miles. If you were heavy and it was hot, that might be a difficult restriction to comply with. But not today. We're pretty much empty. All right. Made the Pfizer. Made the Winio. Rita's at 10. Making that two. Yeah. All right. 310. Flaps, speed, and sterile. And from that, each of the following restrictions, Wino at or above 9,000 and Rita at or above 10,000 are no problem. They've bugged 16,000 and we're waiting for our cruise altitude. AC-9115, contact Houston, center 128.6, good day. 128.6, thanks for your up-to-date, guys. You're welcome. I'm 66 Alpha my contact Houston, center 126.142. Uh, good morning, center, AC-9115 with you out of 11.6 for 16,000. AC-9115, Houston, center, climb, maintain, flight level 220. 220-9115. And with center, we get it, up to flight level 220 for cruise. And that's it. We're off to Corpus Christi. You can see that a SID really isn't that complicated to fly, but with lots of restrictions, a climb via can get you into trouble fast if you get behind the plane. You can see how they brief the entire departure procedure both on the ground and as they cross each fix, so that there's never any confusion, which is a great idea no matter what you fly and even if you're flying single pilot.